Hello, in this video I'm going to be introducing you to resultant forces for A-level mechanics and in this video I'm going to timestamp the different parts so if you want to just skip through to an exam question at the end then you can. And we're going to start off by saying, well, what do we mean by resultant force? What is a resultant force? Okay. And I think the best way to look at it is with a example like this. So here we have a box. It might be a particle, whatever. But in this example, I've drawn a box and we have two forces acting on it. We've got 10 newtons of force acting towards the right hand side. So someone could be pulling the box with 10 newtons of force to the right. But at the same time, we have someone else possibly pulling the box to the left with three newtons of force. Now, I like to think the resultant force is if we had one singular force acting on the box in one direction, what would that force be? And so hopefully you could maybe see from this picture, well, if I've got 10 newtons going this way, but three newtons acting against it, overall we would have seven newtons of force acting towards the right hand side, okay? And that would be our resultant force. Uh, in questions, most commonly you'll work it out like this because it won't be that simple. You'd say, well, I'll take the right hand side to be positive, okay, like this. So we've got 10 newtons of force acting in the positive direction. But fighting against that, we have three newtons of force. So I'll subtract three, and we get left over with the resultant force of seven newtons acting to the right. And we could write it like this. We've got the resultant force R is equal to seven newtons, and it's acting towards the right, okay? And usually you'll label it on in diagrams, so it'll be pretty clear to see. But obviously, okay, you're not gonna get a question in the exam, most likely that's just gonna be horizontal and vertical. You'll get more complicated sort of forces acting on stuff. And so it might look something like this, okay? So here we have a force of 50 newtons acting at 35 degrees to the horizontal, okay? And we can do this because forces are vector quantities, which means they have a magnitude or a size, but they also have a direction as well. And so in the case of this force here, we've got the size of it or magnitude is 50 newtons, and it's acting at 35 degrees to the horizontal. That's its direction. So if we had another force, say, acting, say, straight down, how could we find the resultant force? Well, to help us do that, what we would do is split this force into its horizontal and vertical components, which is really easy, okay? So horizontally, the force would be acting to the right-hand side. It would be acting like this, in this direction. Because hopefully you can see if it's going sort of vertically upwards like that, then it makes sense that the force is gonna be horizontally moving in the positive direction. In terms of the vertical force, that's just the force that's acting upwards in this case like that, okay? Now, you might notice that I've kind of drawn a right angle triangle and I can draw the right angle in and we've got an angle and we've also been given the hypotenuse, okay? And I can label up the other side so we've got the opposite and the adjacent. And so I can use trigonometry to help me find the vertical and horizontal components. And so in this example here, my opposite side, well, I could use the fact that sine of my angle and my angle here is 35 degrees. So sine of 35 is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which is 50 in this case. And so I could say, well, my opposite side or my vertical component is going to be multiplying both sides by 50, 50 sine 35. Pretty straightforward, right? And I can use very similar logic to work out the adjacent. And I can say that, well, cos of my angle, so cosine of 35, is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is, again, 50. And so multiplying both sides by 50, we get the adjacent side is equal to 50 multiplied by cosine of 35. Okay. Now, as I said, right, uh, forces are vector quantities, which means I could represent this force as a vector. And so if you remember, we write vectors like this. If it's in two dimensions, which this one is, we have our X component and our Y component. Okay. And so what is the X component? Well, that's the horizontal force in this case. So let me write that in. So what is the horizontal force? Well, it's this one here. It's my 50 cosine 35. So let's write that in 50 cosine 35. And so my y component is going to be my vertical force, which again, in this case, is going to be 50 sine 35, like that. And that would be in newtons, okay? So I've now expressed this force as a vector. We could also, okay, use our i and j unit vector, um, unit vector to write it in terms of its i and j components. And so if I did that, we would get 50 cosine 35i plus 50 sine 35 j okay i'm just showing you this just because exam questions might have this kind of notation rather than just a force so let's use everything we've learned to work out a question and find the resultant force so here here we have a particle that red dot there it might be a ball but in this case i'm going to take it to be a particle and we have again 50 newtons of force acting at 35 degrees to the horizontal and we also have a second force of five newtons acting directly downwards 
So how am I going to work this out? Well, I'm going to split this 50 newtons into its horizontal and vertical components. So if I draw these on, and remember, we literally just worked this out. So the vertical component was 50 sine 35, okay? And the horizontal component was 50 cosine 35, okay? And so now we're going to resolve for the uh, resultant force, and I'm going to take going to the right horizontally to be positive. So I could say going to the right horizontally is positive. And so in that direction, let's draw the arrows on too, that would be helpful. We have 50 cosine 35 newtons. So the resultant force in the positive direction is going to be 50 cosine 35. Okay, and that's it. That would be our resultant force in that direction. Now we'll resolve, but going vertically. Okay, and we'll take going upwards to be positive like this. So acting vertically upwards, well, we have 50 sine 35 uh, newtons, but acting against that, we have our five newtons going downwards. So we're gonna subtract five newtons. And so now I'll use my calculator to convert these. So we have 50 cosine 35 first, and that is approximately equal to, to two decimal places, 40.96 newtons. And that's going in the positive right direction. And then going vertically upwards, we had our 50 sine 35 newtons, subtract 5 newtons, and to two decimal places, that is 23.68 newtons acting upwards. And so we could re represent this um, resultant force as a vector, and this vector R, we'll call it for resultant force, that would be, say, uh, 40.96 and 23.68 newtons. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's now move on to an exam question that's gonna use this, and we're also gonna calculate the magnitude and the direction of this resultant force too. So, let's see, it says, a force of 15 newtons at 20 degrees to the horizontal acts on a particle P. At the same time, a second force of 10 newtons acts to the left of the particle horizontally. We need to find the magnitude, which is just the size, and the direction of the resultant forces acting on the particle. So first thing I'm going to do is actually draw a diagram, okay? And so we're going to have, say, a particle here. And acting on that particle, we have 15 newtons at 20 degrees. So let's draw that on. We have 15 newtons, and that's at 20 degrees to the horizontal, so 20 degrees. And at the same time, we have a second force of 10 newtons acting to the left of the particle horizontally. And so that would look something like this. We've got 10 newtons of force acting like that, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is split up this 15 newtons at 20 degrees, so this force here, into its horizontal and vertical components, okay? So this would be my horizontal component here, and this would be my vertical component. So again, we're going to use trigonometry, and I can say that, well, 15 multiplied by sine of the angle, so 20, that's equal to my vertical component, and we would have 15 multiplied by cosine 20, that would be equal to my horizontal component. And now I'm actually going to convert these, so we've got 15 sine 20, so that would be 5.13 to two decimal places. So I'll actually rewrite that, or we could say that's equal to 5.13 newtons. And I'm gonna do the same for the horizontal force. So 15 cosine 20, that is equal to 14 point, say one newtons, okay, acting uh, horizontally. So now we're gonna resolve these to find the resultant force. So taking, going, I'll change back to black. So going upwards to be the positive uh, direction, we have 5.13 newtons acting directly upwards and taking to the right horizontally to be positive we have 14.1 newtons subtract the 10 newtons acting to the left and so we get left with 4.1 newtons acting to the right overall so now we could represent this resultant force as a vector and we'll call this vector r and so it's going to be five whoops sorry it's going to be 4.1 newtons acting horizontally and 5.13 newtons acting vertically like this but remember the question wanted us to find both uh, the magnitude and the direction. So how do we find the size of a vector or magnitude of a vector? Well, we can use Pythagoras and actually I'll draw this out. So this resultant force R, that would be 4.1 horizontally, so positively to the right, and it's gonna be 5.13 vertically, so going up. And so if I was to draw this, we've got, it's going just over four to the right, and it's going just over five up. So one, two, three, four, five, up like this and so if I was to represent the vector r it would look something like this in that direction so we could call that r and we know that well horizontally it's going across 4.1 as I said and vertically up it's going 5.13 and so to find the size or the magnitude of r which we could represent as this so like that well I'm going to use Pythagoras and say that that's equal to 4.1 squared plus 
5.13 squared and we're going to take the square root of all of that and if I work that out let's see what we get we've got 4.1 squared plus 5.13 squared and then we're going to take the square root of this and we get 6.5 say 7 newtons to two decimal places and we also need to find the direction of it and so that would be this angle here to the horizontal I'll call it x well, I have my opposite side here and my adjacent side. So I can use trigonometry and it says that, well, tan of my angle, so x, that's equal to the opposite side, which is 5.13, divided by the adjacent, which is 4.1. And so therefore, we could now take the inverse of this. So we get that x is equal to the inverse tan of 5.13 divided by 4.1. And if I work this out on my calculator, we get 5.13 divided by 4.1 and we get an angle x which is equal to 51.37 degrees to two decimal places. So how could we describe the direction? Well, we could say it's acting at 51.37 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, and that would be an answer to that question. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share, and go over to my channel for tons more math tutorials. Thanks for watching.